Today we have a 1936S Cincinnati Half Dollar with attractive Tony. Can you guess the grade? But before we get into that, last week we showed you a 1907 over 7 $10 gold coin. That coin had a number of issues that negatively impacted its grade. Not only did the coin suffer from poor eye appeal due to the long black mark on the left of Liberty's face, several scratches on the obverse and reverse, but the reverse also had a curious spot on it. I believe that this spot was likely caused by the removal of a copper spot, possibly with a small flame. But again, I'm just speculating. NGC gave the coin the grade MS61, which again supports the opinion that the coin had serious issues. A lot of you are really quite close with your grades on the coin. Charles Sarawak got it right. That's two weeks in a row for Charles. Fantastic. Also getting it right was Hiram Piero, Don Greenlee, Travis, Malcolm's Coins, John D, and Ant2242. You all get a spot on Coin Week's grading crew for this week. Can you do it again? All right, the Cincinnati Half Dollar was authorized amongst a flood of commemorative half dollar bills that passed through Congress in 1936. It was a notorious issue that was created for the benefit of one man, Cincinnati coin promoter Tom Mellish, and distributed by Mellish and a confederacy of insiders for the purpose of self-enrichment. Its purported sponsor was the Cincinnati Musical Center Commemorative Coin Association, but this was a fiction established by Mellish to make a buck off of coin collectors. Congress passed the legislation in January and February 1936, led by the Democrats, and President Roosevelt signed the bill into law on March 31st. The coin's obverse features composer Stephen Foster, who only tangentially has anything at all to do with Cincinnati, and certainly didn't compose any of his songs there. The reverse features the goddess of music strumming a toy-sized lyre. Constance Ortmeyer was the designer, and for me this is one of about a dozen or so classic issues that I really like. It's a simple coin with a great bowl-shaped basin. I like the reverse more than the obverse, and maybe that's what does it for me. I also like the font. Most Cincinnati half dollars are lightly struck, and many feature marks on Foster's cheek area. Nearly all are toned to some degree, with blast white coins most certainly being dipped. This one has attractive color. Now, I wouldn't call it plus 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 toning, but its toning helps the eye appeal, in my opinion. The Cincinnati was struck at all three mints, and of the three, the S-Mint coin seemed to be of the poorest quality. This is an S-Mint example. Distributed in August 1936, the Cincinnati half dollars were offered as a three-coin set at $7.75 each. But Mellish and his friends did not honor this price for most buyers, instead claiming that the set was oversubscribed and offering to resale coins to those interested at an inflated fee. The set quickly exploded in value and was pilloried in the pages of the numismatist. Mellish tried to have additional Cincinnati half dollars minted in 1937 to further profit off of this series, but Congress, tired of being criticized for abuses such as this, declined to pass that bill into law. This example has a thin scratch in the hair and tiny cluster marks on the jawline of Foster. These marks are typical for the coin, and I don't know if I've seen very many examples without them. Both the obverse and the reverse exhibit original skin. A few scattered hairlines are apparent on the goddess's knee. But look it over. Take a real close gander at the coin. What grade do you give it, and how much do you think it's worth in today's market? Leave your grades in the comments below, and I'll be back next week to let you know if you are right. For Coin Week, I'm editor Charles Morgan. Until next time, happy collecting.